So you might have watched live streaming of a cricket match on applications like Hotstar or you might have monitored the changing stock prices of a particular stock on applications like Kite from Zerodha. So there is a there is a technology involved in that makes it possible to stream data from the server and that is websockets but we'll get to that later but we'll start by seeing how this thing can be implemented using http and what are the drawbacks if we try to implement using http and then finally we are going to see what are websockets and how they are set up problem that we are trying to solve here is that at the server whenever a live data is available server should send that data to the client without client having sent an explicit request for it. This is what happens in HTTP. In HTTP, every time a client needs a data, it has to send a request and server is going to send back the response. Server cannot send the data voluntarily on its own without client requesting for that data. So that's a drawback, which means every time you need some live data, client will be sending a request and then only server is going to send a response. We need a mechanism such that server should be able to send the data on its own. However, if we still want to achieve this using HTTP, we can use HTTP long polling to achieve the same. But I, I already have made one video on HTTP long polling. If you're interested, I'll put the link to that video in the description or in the comments. You can go ahead and check that out. But still, one thing to remember is that HTTP long polling is a resource intensive mechanism. And that is where we are going to turn towards WebSockets. WebSocket is one of the mechanism that allows server to send the data to the client without having client requesting for that data, which means server can send the data on its own to the client. There is one more mechanism that works similarly for streaming the data to the client, and that is also called as server sent events, but that's not part of this video. We are mostly going to focus on WebSockets. So what is WebSocket? WebSocket is another protocol like HTTP, but unlike HTTP, it is a full duplex channel. And also you can assume WebSocket connection as a long lived connection, which is also full duplex, which means both client and server can send the data at the same time, which means it removes the necessity of client requesting first and server responding back to that request. And that is the essence behind WebSockets. Like once the connection is established, any of the client server can send the data, but because we are focused towards server streaming, so let's assume that once the connection is established, server can continuously stream the live data to the client. Now let's understand how WebSocket connection is set up. Well, back to basics again, in order to set up a WebSocket connection, we again need to take help from HTTP. So basically between client and server, there is going to be a, an HTTP handshake. And after this handshake is successful and both client and server agree that they want to set up a WebSocket connection, there will be a WebSocket connection that will be opened between client and server and then server can stream the data to the client. So now let's understand what exactly happens during the HTTP handshake. So let's assume there is a client who wants to establish a WebSocket connection with the server so that it can get the live data from the server back. So what client is going to do is client is going to issue an HTTP request with an intent of upgrading its connection from HTTP to WebSocket. But for that client needs to tell server what it needs to do in the request headers. So for that, client is going to include two essential request headers. One is connection and another one is upgrade. So with this connection header, what client tells the server is that what it wants from the connection. For example, client may want to keep that particular connection open for a longer period of time. So for that, client, what client will do is that it is going to include keep alive here. Now, once server is going to see that client has kept keep alive in the form of a string here then server will understand that client wants to keep this channel open for some longer period of time now for how much time for that client is again going to include a keep alive header separately that will tell for the duration that client wants to keep that connection to open. However, client can also give in such case like how many maximum number number of requests that can be sent, but that's okay. That's not part of this video. For now, understand that in, the, in our case against connection, client is going to include this upgrade. Now looking at this upgrade, server is going to search for the upgrade header. Now, looking at the upgrade header, server is going to see what upgrade does the client want. 
and it, it clearly mentions WebSocket, which means looking at both of these headers, server will be able to understand that client wants to upgrade this connection, this HTTP connection from HTTP to WebSocket. Another very important header that is included in the request and is very much specific to the WebSocket protocol is sec WebSocket key. So what this header indicates. So this header indicates basically there is a key against this header and this key is calculated using algorithm which is mentioned in the WebSocket specification. So why is this important? Any client who is including this particular header with a valid key supports WebSocket. If this key, this particular header is missing, even though the client has kept these two headers, but this particular header is missing, then server may reject the upgrade request. Why is so? Let's, let's assume there are many different clients. They all don't support the WebSocket protocol. And here is our server. Now, what these clients do is that they are going to send an HTTP request asking for upgrading the connection to WebSocket. But all of these requests don't contain this particular key, this particular header. In that case, server is going to reject all of these requests. So server is actually protecting itself from a client who doesn't support WebSocket and is still sending an upgrade request to WebSocket. That is completely invalid, right? If, if, if there are clients who are who have not implemented WebSocket and are sending sending a request for upgrading the connection to WebSocket, which means they are their intentions are not right. They are trying to bring the server down. So this is just a mechanism by which server is going to prevent itself from being abused by such requests. So that's why this particular header is very important. Once the client request containing all these headers lands on the server, then server is going to send back the response. Now this response is essentially HTTP 101. This response is HTTP 101. What this indicates is that server is ready to switch, switch the protocol from HTTP to WebSocket. And server is going to include a response header which is called as sec WebSocket except. Now this, this particular response header contains the key that was present in the request header sec WebSocket key. So this key plus server is also going to append some ID to it and it is going to encode it with the base 64 encoding mechanism. And once the client receives this response from the server, then WebSocket connection will be established between client and the server. And then finally server can stream the data to the client. And with that, I hope that you understood what is a web, what is the WebSocket protocol and how it is used. And if you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next one.